Hey, hi everyone. It's Friday and I am here, Marsha Grace, your Calm Creativity Connector, in the calm in the center of the storm. Uh, hopefully the storm is beginning to abate. We don't know, but we can hope. So, uh, but I'm still here hanging in. And of course, last week I, I changed our um, uh, conversations up a little bit uh, in, in hopes that uh, we are creating um, uh, a more genial environment. So I started talking about happiness and we're gonna continue that conversation for today and for uh, the next uh, couple of weeks. So, um, so my question, you know, and I, well, before that, I just want to say, you know, there is a way to view your feelings and your experiences differently so that you can discover the solutions that you need for your business, for your personal concerns, for your relationships, even in the face of fear, of health issues, of uh, business concerns, um, whatever's going on. And there's, I know there's a lot going on right now. Because it all, but everything all be, always, as I say, begins with your thoughts. Everything begins with your thoughts. So by shifting them from fear uh, to understanding, um, from the outward stuff going on to your inward experience, uh, you'll discover your own inner wisdom. And that's where all your answers are. So... Um, my expertise, of course, is teaching what I call meditative contemplation. <clears throat> and now more than ever, we all have an opportunity to explore that and to um, discover uh, how, how we can utilize the ability to be still for a little bit and um, discover our own inner wisdom. Um, it's a perfect time to open up to a new part of yourself uh, that's always been there, but really because we're generally all so busy and, and um, uh, involved with the externals in our lives, we don't really have a chance to, um, to give it a try. So uh, if you're able to do that, I highly recommend it. Um, I know I cherish my morning practice uh, every day so that it prepares me and uh, gives me, gives me um, ideas uh, fills me up with a sense of a purpose and uh, prosperity and all those good things. So, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's why I want to talk today about happiness because happiness uh, may be an elusive thing for, for us uh, at this particular time or any time, you know, depending on if you're a glass half empty or a glass half full type person. Um, uh, you know, it, it can be a challenge to find happiness to to really say to yourself do i want to be happy why do i want to be happy is being happy um pollyanna ish or it doesn't make sense so <clears throat> i want to talk today about the fact that yes being happy makes a lot of sense uh, and i want to come at it from from a health perspective today okay so um uh, being happy is going to lead to good health. Happiness lead, equals good health, and for many reasons. And let's let's just look at some of those. Um, it's found that generally happy people don't ask me how they know this, but happy people uh, tend to uh, eat better, eat better, right? They eat more veggies. They uh, they lay off the processed foods. Um, they probably like to cook. And if you're cooking, you're going to cook with a whole real food rather than um, uh, taking something out of the freezer and shoving it in the microwave. So, uh, <laughs> so that's that's one thing that will definitely make a big difference in your happiness. That you're eating uh, produce and veg, you know, veggies and um, uh, whole foods, you know, good things. So, and if you're doing that, if you're eating well, you're also going to give your body more energy because um, eating good food is going to uh, process itself better in your body. And uh, processed foods uh, have a lot of sugar, a lot of salt, a lot of things that when they get in there and mix with your system, um, do not produce uh, the, the kind of energy that you really need. So uh, so that's another, another way to look at it. Um, also, um, 
being happy boosts your immuno, your immune system. Uh, and, and that may, you know, again, a lot of people may say, oh, come on, what does that have to do with anything? But in a minute, I'm going to tell you why. Um, but definitely, a study has shown that happy people uh, fight off illness better than sad people. There's just no two ways about it. Um, and, and they did this uh, through a an experiment of actually giving the cold virus to two groups of people, the happy people who claim they're happy and the people who claimed that they weren't so happy. And uh, uh, the happy group were three times less likely to get the cold. So there you go. Uh, research always helps us clarify certain things that we might uh, doubt. And uh, so that's why we, we always tend to want to go for science, go to the scientists and see uh, how they are experimenting to find out you know, some of these old wives' tales that we, we, tend, we, we tend to call it, uh, are they true or not? Uh, so uh, another thing to have good health is, uh, how happiness breeds good health, is that it, it helps us have less stress. And wow, that's really imp important because if you worry less and you, you're going to sleep better, and if you're sleeping better, you're going to handle your situations much better. So these are things that you really want to, uh, you know, to take, be aware of, you know, really take into, into, uh, into certain, uh, you know, you know, do it, just do it, you know, think about it. It's good to get healthy, stressless sleep. One of the most important things, right, Felicia? <laughs> I think you know that. Uh, hi, Tom. Hi, David. Um, yeah. So less, uh, happiness will lessen your stress, get you more sleep and you and it's it's like a circle that goes around and around and then you're able to function much better in your day which leads to more happiness so it's all good all right and another good health tip as far as happiness goes is it protects your heart yeah uh if you're eating well and you're moving more because you have more energy uh you're much less likely to have a heart attack or a stroke or any of those heart related issues so keep that in mind all right, and here's another good one. <laughs> it uh, increases longevity. So there was a study, again, another study that I found, that tracked the lives of 32,000 people. And um, so they split them in half, and, and the happy group tended, tended to live 14% longer. This was a lo longitudinal study over many years. So 14%, that's, that's pretty good, right? I, I'll take those odds. <laughs> uh, and the last thing I want to talk about as far as health is concerned with happiness is that it diminishes pain. Now, I don't know about you, but I wake up in the morning, I'm kind of stiff, you know, like, Ugh, this hurts, this is, my back is like, Ugh. so I get up and, and I'm feeling all icky. But then as soon as I start moving around, right, things are moving, I get my shoulders going, I do my little, my little routine, and, um, and in five minutes, I'm, you know, I'm feeling great. So, uh, so that stiffness, you know, once we get moving and uh, we have those good, happy thoughts saying, yeah, I got to get into my day. I got to do stuff. And, um, you know, looking forward to all the exciting things I'm going to find and the people I'm going to talk to and um, uh, probably be on a Zoom <laughs> call with today. <laughs> right. We're all zooming away. Um, so uh, so those are the things. OK, just uh, quickly, um, we, we want to eat better. Happy people eat better. They, uh, they have more energy, they have less stress, they protect their hearts, they, in longevity is increased, and they have less pain. So those are all really, really important reasons why we want to be happy. Uh, and I, I want to talk about something. I read this book many years ago. Oh, many, many years ago. In fact, it, it was written, um, the first experience I had uh, hearing about this was, uh, written by Norman Cousins, who was, let's see, I have this article here. Um, he was a um, writer for the Saturday Review, and he developed this strange illness that nobody, no doctors, he went to doctor after doctor, and nobody could tell him what was wrong with him. And they just thought he was some kind of a degenerative bone disease, and it was going to kill him. So they had put him on all kinds of drugs, and then he said, enough. 
He says, none of this stuff is working. You told me I'm going to die. I should just go home and die. So he said, I'm going to take my health back into my own hands. Because he had read, I guess Norman, uh, was it Norman? Vincent Peale wrote a book in um, the 50s called The Power of Positive Thinking. And he had read that book and he started to think about it. Well, you know, it may be because I'm so worried and nervous and concerned about my health. Maybe if I switched it around and, and had thought happy thoughts that maybe that would help. So he checked into a hotel with his hospital bed because he could barely move at this point. And um, he had his friends bring in um, uh, uh, cartoons and funny uh, uh, jokes books and what else? Uh, he watched the Marx Brothers and Candid Camera and, you know, the programs of the day. And he found that if he had a good belly laugh, it would give him 20 minutes of pain-free sleep. So little by little by little, with all this laughing and, and uh, removing the negative and trading it for the positive thoughts, uh, he, uh, he, he became well. He literally be, became well and wrote a book called Laughing My Way Back to Health. I think that's the title. I don't even know if it's still in print, but um, that, was, that was the book that he wrote about it. Now, the interesting thing about this whole process that he did was he did this with his doctors um, uh, working with him or a doctor, I'm not sure whether, how many, but, uh, and it was all, after he got better, uh, it, it, this ex experiment, it was literally an experiment that he was doing on himself, was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is, of course, a premier medical journal. And so that gave it clout, right? That gave it ver veracity. And so uh, it really led to a new science, and, and that's called, this is a long word, but it's called psychoneuroimmunology. And what that means is the psycho is, of course, the mind, how, the, how the, uh, your feelings and thoughts affect the chemicals in your brain, which is the neuro part. And that affects the hormones in your body that fight the disease. That's the immuno, immunology part. So psychoneuroimmunology was born as a result of his um, experiment. So, of course, today we know uh, how, how much, how true that is, you know, how our thoughts affect how uh, we experience our life and how, how, uh, how healthy our body is. So, um, yeah, so, so I think uh, you really want to, I hope, um, consider uh, asking yourself, how healthy, how happy am I? And how healthy am I, right? And if you're not so healthy, well, maybe you can do something about it simply by looking at your thoughts. And that's what I teach. I teach how to be um, aware of your thoughts so that you can say, hmm, that thought I'm thinking is not really helpful. You know, that negative thought, that angry thought, that uh, judgmental thought, all those thoughts are really not helping me feel good. And so I don't want to have those thoughts. I want to let them go. And that's why um, why I do what I do and uh, I hope you and I am working on a course that I will be offering uh, in the near future so uh, tune in for that hang around and I uh, now now that I talked about being happy hey Samira good to see you <laughs> um, so uh, as we always do if you want to hang around for this you're more than welcome do I have my matches uh, yes um, do a little meditation because uh, breathing and meditation are two of the uh, great gifts you can give yourself to bring you into a state of happiness, right? How do you get happy? Well, we're going to talk more about that next week, but, um, but today I just wanted to focus on, uh, you know, just how important it is to be happy so that you can ha be healthy too. All right, so I'm going to, as I said, if you want to hang out here, we're going to do a little breathing and a little quiet time for a moment. So I'm lighting my candle here, and I always say if you want to look at the candle, some people like to look at a candle while they're breathing or uh, in this uh, guided meditation period. Um, I'll bring you back with my bowl, and it just sounds like this. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Uh, so... 
we're going to, first we're going to do a little breath work. And today I want to show you, let me see if I can stand up here. Let me see my belly. Uh, <laughs> this is a breath that I just learned about from a very old book from the 1920s. This fellow was obviously very successful at that time in teaching his what he called vitalic breathing. And um, so his, what, this vitalic breath that he uses goes, goes like this. I'm going to show you. Ah, let me see if I can stand up here. You can see me because I'm going to puff out my belly. Can you see my belly? Let's see. All right. So when I breathe in, see the belly goes out and then it goes in. So, so I'm breathing in through, I'm taking sniffs in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth. The chest isn't moving. The chest does not move. This, all the work is happening here in the lower part of your body, your abdominal area. So it's See, my chest isn't moving. We're not, we're not breathing like that. We're breathing. Okay? All right. You have to work on it. You have to try it. You have to practice it because it's not doesn't come easily at first. All right? But practice it. And, um, and you will, uh, you'll be amazed at how... I shouldn't have been standing because you do tend... You take in all that oxygen. You get a little, <laughs> a little tingly, a little dizzy. Um, but So sit down while you're doing that. And, uh, all right, so we're going to do, oh, look at that. I blew out my candle <laughs> with all my breathing there. I breath <laughs> took the candle out. All right. So I just wanted to show you that breath, but right now I want you to just take a slow, deep breath in and notice here, put, put one hand on your chest and one hand on your abdomen. All right, and then notice as you breathe in, if you're breathing in in the chest or if you're breathing in the belly. And if you're, if you're having trouble figuring it out, as I said, just, just practice, you know, bring your attention to your belly and see if that's where you can bring the breath. Because it's so, and you have to, those muscles have to uh, begin to realize, hey, uh, here I am, you know, I can do something. <laughs> so uh, you wanna work on those. All right, and, um, so do that, and then, all right, so we're, go we're gonna breathe in. Uh, we're going to breathe out. So you're going to just breathe in to the, to the count of three or four, and you're gonna breathe in calm, and breathe out stress. If you wanna, your lips to open, you can open your lips, or if you wanna keep your lips closed, you could do that. But breathe in through your nose if possible because your nose is your filter. So it brings clean air in. So breathing in, breathe in calm, breathe out stress. Breathe in calm, breathe out stress. One more, breathe in calm, Breathe out stress. Okay, now, now that we're feeling present, we're here, we're present. The body's relaxed. Just allow yourself now to float. Imagine yourself just floating, floating in a boat, a little sailboat on a lake. It's a beautiful sunny day. And you've got nice cushions and pillows in the boat and you're just relaxed back and looking up at the clouds, the beautiful white puffy clouds in the sky. And you're thinking to yourself, ah, oh, this is the perfect moment. I am totally and completely happy and fulfilled in this moment. The breeze is brushing your cheek. 
and the sun is warming your skin. And you don't have a care in the world. You have nothing to be concerned about in this moment except enjoying nature as it takes you floating on the water. So just float there for a moment or two longer, enjoying ah, this wonderful couple of moments of relaxation. And then I'll bring you back. So float. Okay, so come on back. Let your sailboat come back to shore. <laughs> and come on out and feel relaxed and completely ah, so in love with this moment. Totally in love, at peace with the world. And see how long you can bring that into your day. That great feeling of being completely at ease, refreshed, and renewed. All right. I feel good. <laughs> Hope you do too. If you enjoyed our time together today, please give me a like, a comment. Tell me how you felt. Tell me what that did for you. Uh, and um, share it. Please share it with people that you think will benefit from it. Uh, and I know many people will. So please do. Don't keep it a secret. Share, share these moments because we, we need to support each other. We need to help each other um, with positive messages and positive ways of being, especially in, in, the, in these uh, coronavirus times, right? So um, at this point, I'm just gonna say what I always say at the end, which is remember, everything begins with a thought. So keep your thoughts light. Hope to see you next Friday. Bye-bye.